Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard video. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a rambly one, trying not to keep it ranty, but there's no structure to this. I haven't really thought about it. I've just heard some news and I'm just spit, basically spitballing about it. So what I'm um, going to be talking about today is basically GW and nerfs. Okay, and it's a really interesting topic. Okay, so what's prompted this? What prompted this is the fact that recently there's been some sort of Tau leaks, some Tau community announcements. I haven't really covered them because one, this is an Imperial Guard channel and we like to focus on that. And two, well, you know, filthy Tau, Xeno scum, you know how, you guys know my history of fighting the Tau and how much I hate them, thanks to 6th and 7th edition. But... You know, with eighth edition things have softened. I, you know, I saw the pain that the Tau were going through at the beginning of eighth edition. They're not a super competitive army. They've definitely fallen a long way. Um, you know, and I could feel that pain because Imperial Guard were there for what, like five, four, four years with the, you know, the last few editions. Um, so I definitely appreciate their their position, and I also appreciated the fact that you know, um, the Tau were hated really badly in especially 7th edition, uh, and then 8th edition came and, and suddenly all the players that made Tau powerful jumped ship and the real Tau players were left behind. Uh, there weren't that many of them <laughs> and uh, they were left with still this quite venomous relationship, at least at least for the, the, the beginning part of, uh, of 8th edition. But anyway, so because of the Tau, you know, struggling, um, People who wanted to play Tau and remain competitive uh, basically happened across the um, the strategy of Tau Commander Spam. So for those of you that don't know what Tau Commander Spam is, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. Um, it was worked out that point for point, Tau Commanders could put out a single Tau Commander with like four burst cans or something crazy, could put out more like reliable hits than a whole team of crisis battle suits because the tower commander could deep strike he was a character so it was difficult to target him if he if he was screened properly like i said he could have like four burst counts something crazy so i well that's like 16 shots from like one guy or something uh, if not more and um and yeah they hit on twos and they could reroll ones if they like popped a popped a bubble or you had an ethereal near them or you know whatever you could or was it a fire blade you know you could you could basically get hit on two rolling ones with a lot of tower abilities and they could put four command options on uh four weapon options on their commander so they were and this was only for like 170 points so it was cheaper to take one commander than it was to take uh like three crisis battle suits so any competitive tower list was tower commander spam with tower with with you know loads of drones um, and basically, the the, the 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 strategy was is you deep struck your commander down, with screened him. You know, deep struck your well, like ten commanders down, and sort of screened them with as many drones as possible, and you just blazed away, and you just made sure your commanders always stayed far away because you know they got lots of wounds as well because you know they're, they're fucking commanders. So that was that was the general strategy, uh, and the and the Gaze Workshop has um, announced that in matched play. Uh, Tau can only take one commander per detachment. So, Supreme Command Detachments, you now can't use three of them to get yourself a stupid amount of Tau Commanders. Uh, now, if you take a Supreme Command Detachment, you can take one commander, uh, and now you can, well, like, take an theory on a Fireblade if you want. You know, you it's, it's, it's been changed. And the internet in general... Because uh, it has has cried havoc, uh, has, has you know has thrown its toys out the pram, and Tau players in general have thrown its toys out the pram, and and gone. This is this is ridiculous. You're nerfing our only competitive build. Um, you're you know you're just nerfing everything. You know any competitive options we have. You're just nerfing, uh, and you know the internet at large saying it's you know scratching their heads and going, well, what are Tau meant to do do now? Um, and all I, all I, all I felt when I read this was all I thought was, <laughs> "Welcome to our fucking world." You know, 
Welcome to the world of IG. You know, welcome to the world of the faction that gets nerfed every month to two months without fail. Faction that's been nerfed five times since it was released. And Eldar hasn't been, you know, nerfed at all. And they've been out for months. You know, welcome to our world, bitch, is what I felt like saying. You know, you got spanked by GW, take a ticket. Take, you know, grab a ticket, take a seat. Kind of thing. But, you know, um, it, you know I, I had no sympathy for them. Because it's, it's it, it was Tau players on the internet who were absolutely stirring up such a shitstorm. And it's thanks to, like, Tau, you know, p people like Tau players who have fallen from grace. The Power Gamers, which had, met, had you know, their £500 Riptide collection invalidated, who caused Imperial Guard to get nerfed. So, you know what, I have no sympathy. But, that's not the point of this video. I'm not here to rant. Um, the point is to basically take a look at, you know, how, how GW is um, sort of nerfing things and how they're kind of... They're stuck in a rock and a hard place. But it's kind of like it's the way of the world at the same time. And what I mean by this is, because when I told... Uh, the Tau player that you guys have seen me play against a few times. When I told him what's happening, he just threw up his hands in the air and was like, why the fuck have they done that? I only take two commanders, and now I can't even take a battalion. I've no he said, I've never used a fire blade, and I've never used an ethereal. They don't fit in with my fluff. You know, he's never used a fire blade because he's had the same Tau army since the first release when fire blades didn't exist. And he's never used an ethereal because he doesn't think, you know, he believes in his militaristic sort of... Um, is, is faction you've seen it it's, it's you know it's firewise devilfish and hammerheads it's traditional stealth suits for god's sake you know metal stealth suits you've seen the guy's army um so it's really interesting because yes tower commander spam was a bit of a problem um but it doesn't really make sense at the same time because because it for well, two reasons one it sort of punishes normal players because as much as Gaze Workshop wants to pretend that anyone who doesn't go to the tournament plays narrative play, it's just not true. We've just got... To, Gaze Workshop has to kind of accept that power level, yeah, power level is a thing, and there are people that use it, and that's great. They play the way they want to. And there's people that... There are some people that play open play, and there are some people which play narrative play. But Gaze Workshop have just got to accept the fact that the vast majority of people play matched play. Because the vast majority of people that play 40k, and I'm not just talking, I'm not talking from a whacker tournament you know, style here. I'm talking from someone who's been through all the stages. Um, you know, from you know, filthy casual to glorious whacker master race, you know. I've I've been I've done it all. You know, I've been playing in Pilgar for like 13, 14 years now. And the point is, is that like, Games Workshop has to accept the fact that the majority of people are just, uh, they play match play, but they still, they play in their basement. You know, basement battles, basement bunker battles. That's what I call it, isn't it? Um, you know, you see, I play lots of, you know, tournament games and tournament practice. Uh, I don't go to a huge amount of tournaments. I go, you know, I go to sort of three or four a year kind of thing. I'm not going to every single one. I go to a few big ones to keep my eye in. And then I play a lot of practice games um, as well. Uh, but in my casual games that I like to play, which I like to put on this channel because it's it's good. It's just, you know, I put a lot of, I try and put as many battle ports up on this channel as possible. Um, and I try to make them interesting. and Because I could I could just build like a, a stand, I could just build one IG list and just use it over and over again. But that'd be boring. So I like to mix things up a little bit. Even if sometimes that makes my list worse. But the point I'm trying to make is, even in my casual games, it has never occurred to me to use power level. Because it just, it's, it's just not a fair way to balance the game. It's just not. You know. Um, if it was a fair way to balance the game, then Games Workshop would be, would be releasing power level changes. But they're not. They just release point changes, don't they? So the, so the point of this sort of... What I'm trying to say is... Um, it's like... Well... You know, when Games Workshop nerfs matched play they have to understand they're not just nerfing competitive players they're, they're hurting regular players like well you know there's nothing wrong with 
with Johnny taking two tower commanders. Nothing wrong at all. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't bother me. I have no, I have no issue with dealing with them. Um. So, it, but now he's going to have to be forced to jig up his list. He, he's got to, you know, he's got to dig out like his ancient ethereal one. He's got the old metal uh, like anva, the one which is the double bladed scythe. Um, the honor blade. He's got. To, but he doesn't want to use that. He doesn't, he doesn't want to use that. So either he's got to use two one point command, you know, two vanguards or something, or he's got to use, um, or, or he's got to use a uh, a fire blade or an ethereal, which he doesn't want to use. So he's he's been hit by something which has never really affected him, and it's a difficult position for Games Workshop to be in. Because yes, commander spam was kind of a problem, and it wasn't very fluffy. But it wasn't like... The thing with Commander Spam is it was just keeping Tau competitive. I faced Commander Spam. I beat Commander Spam. It's not a problem. Not for Imperial Guard. You know, Commander Spam, they drop down. They use four burst counts to delete an infantry squad. Big, big whoop de do. Here's my, thir here's my you know, 13 plasma guns. You're dead. Kind of thing. Um, so Commander Spam was just keeping Tau kind of competitive or pretty competitive. Um, and now it's gone, and it is just gone. Um, but now it's kind of like the narrative players are kind of going to be punished a little bit for that. But it's a difficult one for Games Workshop, isn't it? Like they have to, they have to nerf it at a competitive level. And I guess that just means that the it's this this age old case of you know some pe you know one per all it takes is for one person to ruin it for everybody else. You know, um, so I understand Games Workshop's predicament. If I'm going to be absolutely fair about the whole thing, um, it's much easier for a bunker battle basement player to get round that. Like Johnny only takes two commanders, so it's perfectly possible for him to take a spearhead detachment, you know, and a vanguard detachment and a battalion. It's easy for him to do that. He's already got two units of stealth teams and a ghost kill. That's like three elite slots. All he needs to do now is put one of his commanders in there and he's, and he's fine. You know, and then all he has to do is have long strike and another commander and his army's done without being shifted around too much. So he can shift things around, but it is forcing him, it is forcing him to, you know, to do things he doesn't really want to do. Or he's going to have to take a fire blade or he's going to have to take an ethereal. It's not too bad, but it, it's, it's sort of, it is a case of, some people ruining it for everybody else. Now, the thing about Games Workshop nerfs is it's really inconsistent. Because, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Because on the one hand, yes, Tower Commander Spam was an issue. But what about Hive Tyrant Spam? You know, we've had the codes out for a while now and one of the most competitive things out there is Hive Tyrant Spam. I faced Hive Tyrant Spam and I lost and I wasn't using my Imperial Guard, I was using, I was using my uh, my Scions to try them out and I lost to it. Actually, I, I have a new army coming up guys. I got it on a very, very good deal. I'm not going to reveal it to you entirely but it does have some Scions in it so if anyone wants to take a I guess down in the in the comments what the new army is going to be, secret secret edition. Uh, then please leave some comments down below. But I'm not going to tell you what it is now. The hint is it has sounds in it. Um, so, um, and high time spam is just horrendously powerful. It's horrendous, and the, it's so. It, it, there's some. The tyrannids have been out. Like, game, this is, I guess this is the crux of the issue. So yeah, when Games Workshop, there's two parts of the reason why Games Workshop nerfs are kind of weird, right? Kind of don't make sense because the like the first part was they nerf one. Th you know, they nerf one thing and it hurts people that aren't even abusing it. Um. Uh, and a good example with that is sorry before I move on. A good example with that with Imperial Guard was the fact that regular Imperial Guard players weren't really you know would were absolutely fine to use conscripts and were absolutely fine to use infantry squads. It was fluffy and made sense. And then a few bloody soup players come in and absolutely abuse the ever living daylights out of it, and it's not. Super players which get punished, it's Imperial Guard players. And that's the thing that I guess Gameswood doesn't quite get. Gameswood doesn't get because it's like when you punish 
when you release these nerfs, all you're doing is pushing these suit players onto the next hot thing. You know, when El, you know these whackers, it's, 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 these these people will happily turn up to the club with a different army every month. Games work, Games Workshop doesn't realise this because it's like, how can they afford to do that? Well, how they afford to do it is they sell their old army and then move on to the next. And they make about break even on the army. They might take a small loss, but in the grand scheme of things, they're not losing that much money and then they move on to the next flavour of the month. So when Games Workshop nerfed conscripts, all that you saw happen was masses of Imperial Guard conscripts being sold on eBay and, and Warhammer 40k swap sites. That's all that happened. And then they moved on to the Dark Reapers. And then they moved on to the uh, Hive Tyrant spam. And, you know, the other, you know, any other, you know, soup build. You know, what happened? You know, Games Workshop nerfed Storm Ravens into the ground because Storm Raven spam was a thing. You think, you know, Storm Ravens are still good, fortunately. But you, there's no point in spamming them anymore. Um, but you think like you think, you know, all those people that were abusing Storm Ravens are like, were like, oh no, Storm Ravens don't work anymore. How will I cope? They just went click eBay done. Right, guard concerts. Let's get some of those. Oh, they're not any good anymore. Click eBay done. Dark Reapers. I'll go to China because like this is what Games Workshop doesn't understand. Uh, these whacker players, they ain't buying their models from Games Workshop. Trust me. I I I go. I'm in a club with a lot of with a, with the majority of them. When they want that next whacker army, they just go to China and put a big China order. And they all do a big China order together, so the poachers don't cost too much. And they get thirty dart reapers a piece, literally five or six of them. They'll just they'll just buy thirty dart reapers. I think uh, one guy there went. He bought one plague burst crawler to see how it went together from Games Workshop. <laughs> and then did a China order for seven more. And he got seven for like a ridiculously cheap price because it's China cast. Yeah, the, the, the quality wasn't too bad either. You know, I've got this guy there who's who's just buying up a huge Primaris army. I don't think he's doing it competitively. But he's just getting it all from China. You can't tell the difference when they're painted. It's crazy. Now, I admittedly, I don't buy from China. Um, just because I, I can't be bothered for the weight. But I want to try something out. I want to try it out right now, basically. But look, that's the problem. Anyway, that's a different topic, and we'll do another video on on casters, I guess. Um, but the point is, is, is you know, Games Workshop. So that's the sort of a, a tangent. But I want to come back to this whole games. Why isn't Games Workshop really, uh, nerfed Hive Tyrants? They're so inconsistent with what they nerf. Like Imperial Guard got an FAQ like two weeks after they dropped and then they got another FAQ and another nerf and another it was, it was like rapid it's like first rank fire second rank fire rapid fire nerfing it was crazy yeah Hive Times have been out for ages they've not been nerfed they're still good they're still fantastic people are running nine of them at the club nine so you, well, you can't deal with that now, you know the, the list I faced was nine it was a uh, it was like eight hive tyrants and some more lock, a couple of more locks just for the mortal wound spam, and then as many biovores as he could get his hands on, because the biovores do mortal wound. They're mortal wound artillery. How the fuck is a bio? Going off on a tangent here. How the fuck is a biovore, which fires a fleshy testicle sack? How does that do mortal wound and an earth shaker cannon, which fires a huge artillery shell? doesn't do mortal wounds. This doesn't make sense. Why the fuck does the Bible do mortal wounds? Anyway, getting off topic. But my point is, is there's things which GW haven't nerfed, which they which have been out for for ages. So why were why were guard nerfed so quickly? You know, Eldar if if Eldar Dar, if Dark Reapers had been in the Guard Codex, they would have been nerfed within a month. Yet here we are, three months down the line and they're still good. People are expecting them to get massively nerfed in the mar in the big March FAQ. What people have to understand is the March FAQ, there's, there's probably not going to be any points changes in that. I'm not saying this for sure. I don't know. But it's but Games Workshop has said the FAQ is to clarify rules. And the chapter approved is to make points changes. So don't expect Dark Reapers to get any cheaper or any more expensive. They're not going to change. They might lose a rule or two, but they're still going to exist. 
and they're probably going to remain the same points level. And this is what confuses me about Games Workshop nerfs. Sometimes they release the FAQs rapid fire, and sometimes they let these overpowered bullshit things just get away with it. And what's annoying me slightly is the inconsistency of it. And this is what I want to sort of finish on, okay? Because when Games Workshop first announced 8th edition, they said it's, we're rebooting it, uh, we are a new company, we've got rid of all the shitty old CEOs and everything, and we're, we're a new company, and we're going to release a balanced edition. And they released things, and on the first day, it looked good. Because there were some overpowered things, and there were some mistakes, and there were some things that needed FAQing, but no one minded, because games because it because it was in the in the interest of balance. You know, razor wing flocks needed to be balanced, for example. And the FAQs and nerfs were coming thick and fast when everything was released initially. And then now, things have are slipping back things are reverting to the old ways where overpowered things seem to stay overpowered for a lot longer i mean we're talking the the perfect perfect example is dark reapers versus conscripts now on the tabletop they they don't offer obviously do the same battlefield role but they are equally in the eyes of the internet, overpowered. And it's like, okay, well, the conscripts were overpowered and they received a ridiculous, you know, we received five nerfs in, or four, sorry, we received four nerfs in about a month and a half. It was stupid. We just received nerf after nerf after nerf. And then the codex came out and Commissars got nerfed. We've just got a ridiculous amount of nerfings. Yet Dark Reapers have been out, and they are so broken and overpowered. They are worse than Conscripts could ever be. Because Conscripts didn't actually do any fucking damage. At least you could kill Conscripts without getting your face smashed in. Dark Reapers, you don't even get close without them destroying you. And what happens? Three months later, we haven't heard so much as a peep from Games Workshop. How does that make sense? Why is it like that? You know, it, the Chaos Codex has been out for absolutely donkey's years. You know, it's been absolutely out for a really long amount of time now. Has Games Workshop done anything to stop the Cultist Bomb? Nope. Yet the Cultist Bomb is a really powerful tournament winning tactic chaos has gone from being the punching bag of 40k to one of the, probably the most powerful army because they have so much variety why has games workshop done nothing to stop that how how does tide of traitors still not cost reinforcement points how you know codex demons has been out for a couple of months now why has Games Workshop done nothing in like six to eight weeks to nerf the Blood Letter Bomb? Yet, once again, Blood Letter Bomb is a standard, standard tactic. It's a tournament winning tactic. Chaos can now take two Death Stars, two bombs, in one list and still have points left over. How has neither of those things been nerfed? How has it not been nerfed that Slaneshi Colsis with Alpha Legion hasn't been nerfed? That can drop in, blast away, and then Deafening Cacophony, blast away again. Veterans of the Long War, Prescience. It's crazy. How has this not been nerfed? Yet Conscripts were nerfed within... Commissars were nerfed within two weeks of the codex being released. Two weeks! They had that shit ready to go. So. 
this is my this is why I said this video is a bit of a weird one. It's a bit of a rambly one. I've tried not to rant too much. I just want to bring it back down to, to earth now, level set level headedness, sensibleness. Why are you know I just don't quite understand the inconsistencies. Okay. And my I have a theory. Okay, I have a theory. But it doesn't quite hold up, but I have a theory. Okay. The reason why the Nerf bat, the Nerf parade has slowed down is because people aren't quite moaning and bitching about it quite as much anymore. Okay? Um, when 8th edition first dropped, there was a lot of new interest in the game. And there was a lot of new players coming back to the game. And that meant there were a lot of people being very vocal online. So, when these things like Storm Raven Spam was an issue and Razor Wing Flock and Conscripts, these things were all issues that came to light at the beginning of 8th edition when the majority of people were vocal, posting on, you know, Daka Daka, Posting on, uh, uh, you know, the Warhammer community Facebook page. And so, Games Workshop was getting inundated with these problems. Now, 8th edition's calmed down. And while, yes, it's still, you know, it's still very popular, people have done what I said they would do. And they've sort of got used to it. They've got used to 8th edition. And they've got used to the fact that... Um, this edition is very different and it will take time to figure out how to beat certain things. So instead of moaning, a lot of people now just end up trying to figure out how to beat it. And there's always going to be some people that moan online. But the majority of people now, you know, the excitement has died down. Most people can't be bothered to go online and post things anymore. There's not that whirlwind of hype flying around. So Games Workshop doesn't get as much pressure or as many messages or as much notification about something being absolutely broken. And I think that's the problem. And I think if Games Workshop hadn't made all the nerfs that they have made, I think, you know, some were necessary. I think uh, Boots on the Ground is a really good rule. Um, and, you know, some things were silly, like an Acolyte with three wounds costing eight points and a Razor Wing. Uh, being too cheap that's fine that was just you know slight problems and you know conscripts you know probably could have done with a couple of nerfs but not not as bad as they did do. and commissar should have been left alone but now people aren't complaining as much as they were about those things so games which doesn't have the, doesn't have the same pressure to, to nerf things it doesn't have the same awareness and i think that's what it is and if people if games which hadn't made all these nerfs i think that Conscript spam wouldn't be an issue anymore. And I think that people would have learned how to deal with it. And do you know what? I th and the problem is that when something gets nerfed, this is the thing, this is the problem with listening to internet groupthink. It's the problem with Games Workshop listening to the internet too much. The internet will always have something to moan about. Always. There's always someone who doesn't like the fact that their special snowflake army got its shit pushed in. Okay? And it's no matter what Games Workshop does to us, I mean, I want them to nerf things and I want them to balance the game. I just want them to be consistent about it. Okay? But no matter what Games Workshop does, they have to understand that they're not going to please everybody. And also, people are always going to find something to moan about. And a really good example of this, so what I'm going to end the video on is, People moaned and moaned and moaned about conscripts. And no one ever said anything about infantry squads. People would regularly say in in threads that, you know, if 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 conscripts weren't as prevalent and Imperial Guard had to use their infantry squads, then Imperial Guard would be fine. So what does Games Workshop do? They nerf conscripts into the ground. People start taking infantry squads instead because they need to. I mean, every, you know, no good, no good IG player left home without some infantry squads anyway. And so it didn't really bother a lot of us. Well, guess what? 
Guess what the internet's complaining about now? Infantry squads. So you can't win. Because, I, and I'm telling you this now, if Games Workshop nerfs infantry squads, it's just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I t makes me feel sick, honestly. Um, because you can't nerf the infantry squad. It's, it's just a staple unit. It's 10 dudes with las guns. And I have to tell you now, if you're listening to this video and you just don't agree with me and you think that infantry squads don't need to be nerfed, uh, uh, infantry squads need to be nerfed, let me tell you, if you're playing a game of 40k and you're struggling because of 10 men with las guns, the problem isn't the guardsman. The problem is you. Because if you're unable to be, you know, even if someone's using them to flesh out a fucking brigade, and you're unable to kill 60 guardsmen, then just give up. Because at this point, you know, just give up. Because you're not hit, you know, you're not going to win games of 40k. Because let me tell you, I lose 60 guardsmen a turn. So you should be able to kill 60 guardsmen a turn. And let me tell you another thing, it's not hard. It's not hard to build a list which can kill 60 guys per turn and have plenty of anti-tank left in it. You can do it with fucking tactical marines. So, yeah, bit dark at the end there, but I think I make a good point. And I just want to hammer the point at home. Do you know what I saw today on Daka Daka? A five-page thread on why orc boys were overpowered. Orc boys, for fuck's sake. Orcs have been bottom since fucking fourth edition. Please, you can't nerf orc boys. They're not overpowered. I have played against them many times in 8th edition. I have played against the Green Tide with multiple armies. I have seen the Green Tide against multiple armies, strong and weak. And let me tell you, it's the only thing keeping orcs with a toe in the competitive scene. You can't just nerf every competitive build there has to be such a thing as a competitive build this is what these moaning players don't get and i know i've gone off on one a little bit and i know i'm a different topic now but it's still related to nerfs it's still related to games workshop but this is what people don't understand it's okay to have a powerful list having you know a huge infantry wave of imperial guard is fluffy it should be powerful if you're outnumbered 5 to 1, 6 to 1, you should struggle. Because you're fucking outnumbered by a ridiculous amount. Try not take it. You know, if you're going to take an elite army, then make sure your elite army can deal with a, with a horde. Because it can be done. It's been done for many editions. And, it, you know, the Green Tide. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's got a nickname, the Green Tide. It's been around since orcs were invented in 40k. It is such an age-old tactic. Such an awesome tactic. And you just, you shouldn't get angry. If an orc player has put, come on, it's orc players. No one competitive runs orcs. They're only run by fun people. They're only run by great people. They're only run by the kind of person which in the middle of a club or a games workshop or a tournament scene will stand on his chair and scream wah as loud as he can. And he doesn't care that everyone looks around at him. So just, just don't nerf Green Tide. And this is what I think the crux of it comes down to. Yes, some things are overpowered and need to be nerfed. Storm Raven spam surrounded by Gilliman was nerfed but do you know how that was nerfed it was nerfed with a rules change perfect no one complained about that nerfing things with points changes it just doesn't work it just doesn't work you need to nerf things with rules changes and maybe if something is over costed or under it needs to be changed you know points value but don't you know it's it's just the crux of the matter is is that there has to be, you know, nerfing is an important thing and we don't want things to get overpowered, but we have, people have to understand it's okay for there to be competitive builds. If you're the kind of space wing player that just has had the same army for like 10 years and it's just a bunch of like tactical squads 
with flamers and missile launchers because that's what Games Workshop used to release tactical marines with and you've never updated your army you can't expect to win with that okay you know you just can't that, that it's it's okay to lose games it's okay for some things to be overpowered th some things to be underpowered some units should be able to beat other units there's such a thing as a counter this is what these people don't understand they think that if they take howling banshees then then howling banshees should be able to deal with every unit out there well no that's not true otherwise you might as well not have different units and, and every faction gets one unit and they're all identical and every faction's units are identical and they all have the same stats because there's meant to be variety you know and that's what's important and so there will be units which are weaker than others there just will be because some units are just flavorsome if you know if you went out there and bought a hundred uh or you know ten pyrovores and pyrovores were terrible then you know you're just running that as a fun army but you can't expect games workshop to cater to you you can't expect games workshop to, to you know you just scream at games workshop and say i went out and bought 10 pyrovores and they're all shit make them good no some units will be better than others that's called fluff if you want to that's how you have a fluffy game versus a competitive game and like i said I'm going to say it last time. It's okay for there to be such a thing as a competitive list. It's okay for such a thing as there to be fluffy lists. That's, it's good to have that divide because it allows people to have competitive, tactically stimula stimulating games and it also allows people, when they just want to relax, to have a fun game. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's gone on way longer than I wanted to. It's gone off on tangents and it's taken many different routes. But the point is, is we just had a big old sort of stream of consciousness on 8th edition and nerfs, confusions, you know, things that we like about it. I hope you guys noticed that I didn't just blame Games Workshop. I did actually, you know, pass the book around and blamed, you know, the, the community. And, you know, I didn't blame them, but mentioned the community is a problem and that Games Workshop does ha have some problems as well. You know, I'm fair. I'm not just here moaning and bashing on Games Workshop. But it's just a stream of consciousness. And it's just a bit of fun. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. The most important thing is leave lots of comments below. What do you guys think? Am I completely off the mark here? Is, do you guys have like some inside info on how, how Games Workshop nerfs things and why they nerf things quicker than others? Um, I mean, I guess at the end of the day... Um, it's a good thing that Games Workshop has slowed down the nerf bat, isn't it? I and mean, it's okay for some things to remain overpowered for a little bit, as long as it finally gets confirmed they're overpowered. Because I guess the problem is, is that some things get nerfed too quickly. You know, Imperial Guard got nerfed too quickly, too hard, before the impacts of each nerf could really be calculated. But I guess Dark Reapers have kind of been... It's a fine balance. They've been around too long. They need nerfing now. They are so fucking broken. And Hive Tyrants need nerfing as well. So it's a delicate balance. And I understand Games Workshop's position. I just wish they'd be consistent. I wish there was a set formula. Like, we're going to release a codex. And then we guarantee two months later there's going to be an FAQ. We're going to give it two months. So that everyone can really get to grips with all the different units. And then when we've after... Or do it every quarter. After a quarter, after three months... We'll give them, we'll give them some some changes, and that would be nice and consistent. If that could be a written policy, that would be great, or at least a verbal one. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.